So you have this big idea which will make you a billionaire and you really need to put it out in front of your users as soon as possible. Well, you're in luck. This video is just for you. For the next few minutes, we look at one of the most versatile tech stacks and you'll see how easy it is to build and deploy a full stack app these days. For a bit of context, I've been a software developer for almost 15 years now, with a background in Java-based languages on the backend and with experience mostly in React and Angular on the frontend. During this time, I attempted and failed to launch more startup ideas that I like to admit. I'm just an old man thinking about his mistakes. If I learned anything from this experience, is that you need to iterate quickly and get your product in front of customers sooner rather than later. This is why it is so important to have a good understanding of new platforms like Dino and libraries like HTMX. They come packed with a lot of features which will do the heavy lifting for you and you can focus on building an MVP in a matter of days and then validate it with your potential customers. Before getting into the nitty gritty, let's quickly review the project architecture. The Dino platform will be the main player on the backend. It will listen to incoming HTTP requests via Oak, will render HTML on the server via lightweight templating engine and will persist data via its KV native storage solution. Once the rendered HTML reaches the front end, HTMX is loaded and used to build powerful UIs in a straightforward manner. Let's install Dino, initialize a project and see how easy it is to build performant powerful backend services using this platform. Dino uses URLs for dependency management and we can centralize the libraries and tools we'll use in a dependency file. Then, in the main.ts file, I'm creating a new Oak application, registering a view engine, a router, and then finally start our app on the 8000 port. We are building a small microblogging platform, I know, very original. So in the router.ts file, I am defining a couple of post-related endpoints with their associated handlers. Then, in the handlers, we are performing the usual create, read, update and delete operations you should be familiar with. When a create request is received, we can retrieve the passed in data from the request body and then store the information in the database. We'll get back to KV in a second. Following the same approach, we can delete an entry from the database based on an ID passed in as a path variable or search in our list of entries based on a search key passed in as a request parameter. Note that all these handlers are returning HTML back to the client using the context render method. This will be relevant in the second part of the video when we'll discuss the front-end implementation. The handlers are also relying on database service methods, so in a new file, let's open a Dino KV connection, define a type for our entity and then create helper methods for the database operations we'll need. It should be more than obvious how easy it is to create, read, update or delete data using Dino KV. If you are not familiar with KV, just know that this is a key value globally distributed persistent solution built on top of Apple's Foundation DB. It is natively integrated into the Dino platform, so no need to install other dependencies or libraries and, for convenience reasons, it uses SQLite when running locally for a seamless dev experience. Let's now move to the front-end, where things get even easier thanks to the straightforward developer experience HTMX is offering. Note that all we have to do is add a script in the HTML head area. No with plugin, no compilation step or build process. Inside the views folder, I define the templates Dino will use to render the HTML on the server. Once the response reaches the browser, HTMX is downloaded and executed. As a result, any plain old DOM element can become the source of an async HTTP request and a trigger for other DOM updates. This is how, for instance, an input field can easily trigger a search request to the server and then update the main view element with the received response. Moving to the post.html template, which is rendered when the user wants to see all the written articles or to search them, we can also see how plain HTML buttons can trigger delete requests to the server and how actions can be guarded by a confirmation model. Now that we have the app running, by the way, I'm linking the GitHub code in the description, it's time to publish this app at a public URL. If you have any experience with deployments, you know this is a headache. Databases have to be provisioned, environments need to be configured, and load balancers have to be put in place to provide scalability and stability. Well, with Dino Deploy, we don't have to worry about any of these. Simply log into Deploy, link your GitHub account, click on the new project button, and link your project repository. Click on Create and Deploy, and that's it. Dino will take care of everything else. After a few seconds, you will get a production deployment hosted on a public domain. On top of that, you have easy access to logs, analytics and full control over your KV instance. I think we can all agree that this is pretty impressive, but I can see how this stack might not be your cup of tea. After all, HTMX offers a different developer experience compared to some other established UI frameworks. I am focusing a lot on efficiency on this channel and here are a couple of alternative tech stacks which are still heavily focused on simplicity and efficiency. Until next time, thank you for watching.